Summit Environmental Solutions Pest in Wildlife Management. Today on our YouTube post, we're going to be talking about black snakes. So I got this beautiful black rat snake from a property in Chantilly this morning. Uh, but this guy's about three and a half feet long. Woohoo! Snake! This is not a dangerous snake. This is a good snake. We want these snakes because these snakes eat mice. Now, one way you can tell a venomous snake from a non-venomous snake, not that you'll ever get this close, but if you do, if you see that eyeball, you'll see that it's got a round pupil. If it's got a round pupil, it's not a venomous snake. It's a non-venomous snake. So that's why I'm holding him with my bare hands, because I don't want to get bit by a venomous snake. But if he bites me, it's no big deal. It hurts a little bit, but it's no big deal. Most people are not going to get close enough to see if that eyeball is a round eyeball. <clears throat> but just experience, I know it's a black snake and it's not harmful. Now let's say you've got a skin in your house, and that's all you've got. If you look at the bottom part of the skin, because snakes shed a couple times a year depending on temperature and food source, but if you look at the belly scales on the skin, you'll see that there's a single row of scales running down this belly. And as you get closer to the end of the snake, you can see that it goes from single row of scales to double row of scales. So if you see that at the anal segment, at the terminal segment of the tail, then you know it's a non-venomous snake. Not that that makes it much better for most people. I don't want a snake in my house. Most people don't. but. If, you, if they're there, they're usually there for one reason, and most of the time, that's to eat mice. Sometimes they'll go in just to shed their skin or to winter in what's called a hibernaculum, uh, where you get a number of snakes hibernating or overwintering together. So these guys can be handled uh, pretty safely. You could actually probably guy, turn this guy into a pet. In Virginia, you can actually keep these guys as pets. You can take them out of the wild, and I could keep them as a pet legally if I wanted to. Good guy. He's a good guy to have, because he's going to eat my mice. I'm going to let him go on my property, so he eats all my mice. So we're going to let him go real quick. We're just going to let him go under my shed. All right, buddy. Off you go into the wild blue yonder. Bye-bye. There he goes. Now we got this other one right here. So I don't want to get bit, so I'm just going to use the snake, the snake stick to get him out of here. This guy's a little more aggressive. You can see, it's a good-sized snake. It's pretty heavy-bodied, and he's curling around. And he wants to bite me because he's struck a couple times. See? He's coiled up. He wants to strike. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop him on the ground, pin his head, and pick him up. I'm going to show you it's the same basic snake. Right behind the head. Because not that it's going to hurt me. I mean, it will physically hurt me. But not dangerous to me in any capacity. So, pin it behind the head. And you use a tool like that, then you really don't have to worry. But even leather gloves will be fine. Today's got kind of a the belly nice and creamy colored here. Then it kind of turns a bluish gray here. Round pupils and double row scales behind the tail. So we got a little bit of a pattern on this guy. It's not glossy black. So we might have ourselves a king snake. Oh, he's constricting me. Look at that. They're constrictors. They grab onto their prey with that big open mouth, grab them. They've got a little sharp row of teeth and they grab and hold onto it and then they wrap around them like this guy is right here. So he's tuckered out from me fighting with him. And there he goes, there he goes. He's trying to squeeze me. So, quick little tutorial on non-venomous snakes. Got two of these out of this house. Bye y'all.